So what are pop rivets and how do you do them? This video will let you know. Hi, I'm James, and this video is going to go over uh, how to do some basic pop rivets and then also a lesser known accompanying tool called a Clico uh, that we'll get into in a little bit. So uh, you may have seen I made this uh, fun little project as a demonstration for students. And typically pop rivets are used in more sculptural applications. They're a little too rough for like smaller, finer jewelry pieces, but they can be really excellent, uh, particularly to get into places that you can't reach from both sides. Like if you're gonna do a solid rivet and hammer on both sides, uh, in this case, like with this piece, you really can't get in a lot of these teeny little places of uh, this kind of recycled tin piece that I did. And so these are the pop rivets, and you can see the, um, the head there, and then also the flared part that's holding all the metal together there. And so this was just a fun little sort of like robotic blacksmith uh, that I made as an example for students and everything. Uh, but it can be a really versatile tool for larger kind of sculptural approaches. So uh, you need a couple things to do it. One would be a pop rivet gun, which is the tool that you're going to use with the pop rivets. Uh, pop rivets come in a variety of different sizes and materials, and they'll typically, they're very inexpensive, and they'll typically come in a kit like this. The important things to be aware of is the type of material and the diameter and the length of the rivet. So the type of material means that it would be more difficult to flare and attach your materials together. So an aluminum pop rivet would be softer and easier to work with than a steel pop rivet might be for uh, heavier applications. The, uh, the length has to do with how much material you're sandwiching together. And so uh, typically I'm working with thinner sheet metal, so I'll use shorter pop rivets. And uh, the diameter depends on what size hole that you want to be drilling or punching into your material and how big you want those pop rivets to be, depending on the strength you need in the piece or just the, the general appearance. So, um, so I'm working with uh, these eighth inch aluminum pop rivets. And um, what I'll do is I'm just going to attach two sample pieces together and you can either punch or drill that hole before inserting the rivet. Uh, in this case, I have a little handheld hole punch that is also set up for eighth of an inch that uh, I just use all the time in the studio. So you just either mark or place wherever you want that hole to go in the piece. You have it lined up there and then it just punches through and you have the hole remaining in the piece. And so let's say I need to attach these two pieces here. What I'm going to do is just place the pop rivet through that punched hole with any luck. <laughs> Sometimes it gets a little bit snug. So you might need to uh, just file that opening out a little bit. Let me just grab a nice round file that'll open that up a little bit. So that can be really useful to have on hand. Just wanna open that hole up just a touch so the pop rivet fits through easily. And the important thing to know about how the pop rivet works is that it's a long shaft of metal that has a flared end. And the, what the pop rivet gun is gonna do is grab this shaft and start pulling it away from this flange of the material. And so this, this sort of, of bald or expanded end is gonna move up through this tube of metal and flare it out. And then at a certain point, it's gonna encounter enough resistance that it's gonna snap this shaft off and make a little popping sound, which is why they, they call them pop rivets. So I have the pieces held firmly together towards each other, have this ready to, uh, Put in the pop rivet gun so that shaft just gets inserted in there and I'm just sort of holding it just to show you how it's going to go and then it's, I'm going to keep this placed up against the gun start squeezing the gun you can see the the end starting to flare it usually takes about two squeezes you want to replace it there you can see how it's starting to flare squeeze again and it's probably going to pop at this point there you go and so now that's secured that metal. You can remove the remaining shaft from the gun. You don't need this anymore. And you've attached that piece. 
and it can be, you can leave it a little bit loose if you, can, if you need to reposition your materials or uh, you could certainly go in with a hammer and hammer this side back down if you're able to access it or if it's inside of a larger box or hollow space, then that's just gonna be the, the finished edge that it's gonna end up with. So uh, it's a very secure way of attaching materials very quickly, particularly if you have a whole lot of materials to attach. Um, if you're trying to line up a whole bunch of rivets on a piece, and a, uh, a really great friend of mine who uh, was building his own one-person airplane, and if you imagine airplanes with those wings that have like hundreds of rivets on them, you need to line up all those holes in the materials and can't have it shift, which is really tricky to do. And so he made me aware of this tool I had never heard of called a Cleco, C-L-E-C-O, and what it does is it's able to have sort of a removable thing like a pop rivet that can go into your material and temporarily hold it in place. So let me just punch another hole really quick just to show you. We'll just kind of make a chain here and I'll get another piece that it's going to attach to. And we're going to just file those a little bit to just open them up just to make sure we don't run into any trouble. And so here is a typical Clico set and this comes with a Clico tool and three different sizes. And those three different sizes have to do with the size hole that you might be temporarily positioning. So how it works is similar to a pop rivet, which is why I thought I'd show right now except that it's removable. So you have this, this Clico wrench and in the middle of the Clico is kind of a, a thicker tongue. And then when you squeeze the wrench, it's removing that and the spring loaded ends spring together, which enable you to insert it into the hole in the material. And then as you release that Clico tool, it flares back out and holds it. So it's like a pop rivet, but you can remove it. So you slide that in there and then it's held together. Now, obviously I want to hold another material on there. So I'll get that, slide my next piece, and then remove it. And then it's going to, not tightly, but uh, relatively firmly secure it together. So then if I needed to drill and position a bunch of other holes for a bunch of other material, it would be temporarily positioned but I might want to shift things and so I don't want to rivet and then have to drill out that rivet or anything like that. So um, the Clico is really a lesser known tool, I think outside of uh, larger scale sheet metal working, something certainly I didn't become aware of with my training as uh, like a metalsmith or a sculptor or anything like that. But these tools in conjunction with each other are really versatile and can really let you build a whole lot of things out of sheet metal. So uh, just wanted to share that little little discovery of the Clicos with you as well as uh, just how to put things together real quickly with pop rivets. So have a great time.